Hello, Adam. How are you? Not too bad. How are you, Mike? I'm good. We are in the home stretch with two conference games remaining. A lot at stake in the final week. Um, your thoughts on how the seeding is shaping up and just the compaction of where people are in the standings. Yeah, you know, it's it's funny, Mike. We talk every week. I feel like we say the exact same thing every week. Oh, the Missouri Valley jumbled standings. But listen, it's true. Here we are. We're into the end of February. And, you know, you got a team that could finish third or eighth. You got two teams at the top of the standings with a couple of tough games remaining. And really, you look in that five through eight spot. If, if you look between Indiana State with a little bit of an edge, but Valparaiso, Missouri State, and Drake – all, all four of those teams trying to stay out of that Thursday night matchup. We've never had a team go into Arch Madness, play on that Thursday night game, and go through and get to the NCAA tournament. And, and, and don't get it confused. Every single one of these teams thinks if we play our best basketball for three or four nights, we have, to go, we have a chance to go to the big dance. Well, Thursday, as you mentioned, is really hard to play in the opening round of our tournament. We've only had one team reach the semis. Right. In, in history of coming off of a Thursday, and that was Bradley uh, back in, I think, 1998. We've, we've actually only had three teams that have entered the tournament at 9-9 nine and nine and play on Thursday. We could have two 9-9 nine nine teams playing on Thursday this year. So our league is, as you know, is much better than we were last year on paper in the net rating. Um, but I'll be figuring out a lot of tiebreakers <laughs> heading into Saturday's games after our midweek games. But our tiebreaker is not that complicated. We go to head-to-head, -head, and if there's a more than two teams tied, we go to a head-to-head -head within the pool of teams, and then we go to the net ranking. So we might not be able to announce our bracket until Sunday morning because we go to the net rating that includes Saturday's games as well, so we won't get those until Sunday morning. So we, we might not find out who's playing whom until Sunday after the regular season ends on Saturday. Which means the next time I talk to you, I might see a few bags under your eyes as you're trying to figure this stuff out. Well, listen, from a fan's perspective, this is great. This is why this is the most exciting time of year and why you can't beat March in college basketball because there's so much emotion. There, there's just so much uh, pent up energy for fans and for these kids. It means so much as they move forward. And now you're starting to get it. We've had the last couple weeks in the Valley. It's had that playoff type of atmosphere. There's definitely going to be a sense of urgency this week, win or go home. Yeah. And I think the teams that, that finds a way to win a road game in this final week, right. um, will put themselves apart from somebody else. We've had an historical winning percentage at home. We lead the NCA among conference schools with, our winning percentage in league play. And it's the best that I've been able to research back until 1996, 97. We won 74% of our home wow. games in conference play, which is un unreal. It's just um, unmatched in our history, I, I believe, at least until 1996, 97. Uh, so a couple of games uh, you want to circle on your count. Of course, there's the war on I-74. where They just call it a rivalry now with Illinois State and Bradley. But Bradley plays another big game on Saturday in one of our last games of the season, playing Loyola on CBS Sports Network on Saturday. Talk about your thoughts on that key game and the teams that are both in position either tie for the league title, win the league title, or finish in the second or third hole. <laughs> I mean, isn't that crazy, just all the combinations? But you're right, Mike. That is absolutely the one, as I look at the schedule, that's the game I circled because it's going to have so many implications. I mean, first and foremost, it's going to be jockeying for standings in the league. Depending on how Northern Iowa does, both this Loyola and Bradley team could be playing for second or third, or if Northern Iowa stumbles down the stretch, they both have an outside shot at being first in the league. That's a, that's a really big deal. I, I think they'll probably be second or third. Northern Iowa, I assume, is going to take care of business this week. But on the other side of that coin, you look at it, it's senior night for Bradley. You're going to have two names that Valley coaches are going to be very happy to walk out with their parents and send them off out in their arena in Peoria between Daryl Brown and Elijah Childs. Those guys have caused headaches in the Valley for years it's going to be a really emotional night for Coach Brian Wardle and his group as they send those two off. And what better way to do it than off a big win on your interstate rival in Loyola? And, you know, don't be surprised, Loyola and Porter Mosher, this is the time of year where they're at their best. That This is a proven team that can win. They're going to be really sneaky here coming up the last, next couple of weeks. Yeah, and Northern Iowa has no cakewalk with Evansville, with DeAndre Williams back now for two games. He's getting back into the flow for the Aces. And then they end their regular season with a road game on ESPN2 at Drake. It'll be their last game of the season with a 5 o'clock start on Saturday. 
but they've got no cakewalk. It'll be hard for the Panthers also. Yeah, I, I, definitely. And you, you talk about that Evansville game and having DeAndre Williams back. You know, you look at the record in their own 16, but how many conference teams that are own 16 won on the road at number one, Kentucky? That that doesn't happen. The upside is still there for Evansville. If they put it together, they definitely have a shot in that Northern Iowa game. And you, you mentioned going to Drake. Drake played Northern Iowa really tough at Northern Iowa. You got another in-state rivalry game. Emotions will be high in the Knapp Center for that one. So that that's what makes all these games so fun. There's such little separation between the top and the bottom. But I'm I'm definitely, if you have an opportunity, Valley fans, watch that Loyola at Bradley game. That's going to be a fun one. Well, and you mentioned before the, the seniors of uh, Bradley playing in their perhaps their final home game of their careers, but there's sure. a lot of other seniors in the league doing the same thing. And other other players are playing for um, maybe that last push for all conference honors or specialty award units. Uh, your thoughts on, on some of the key guys that you've watched this year and where you think they stack up as we head into the final two games of the regular season? Yeah, you know, I, I think like a lot of other people, I'm trying to figure out my ballot here down the stretch. And and you look, I, th- I think it's a two-man race for player of the year. You got A.J. Green, who in my estimation has a little bit of edge over Cameron Crutwig. Now a lot can change in the final week if Loyola has a great last two games and enters the conference tournament with the number one seed. You, you might end up giving Cameron Crutwig the nod. I think Marcus Domask has all but wrapped up the freshman of the year. I think for him... If he can continue to propel his team forward in the standings, he might get double dip with newcomer and freshman of the year. I I, I look at a guy like Roman Penn and and for that Drake team, can he try to propel himself into that newcomer of the year conversation? And, you know, it's interesting. We got a lot of guys that could be on that most improved team as well. So I'm really going to be paying attention. It's going to be it's going to be fun to see not only the team performance and how the standings shake out, but but to take a look at the box scores and, and check individual performance as well. Yeah, and it's a 30-plus game regular season, an 18-game conference season. But for some voters, it's what have you done for me lately? And they'll right, be paying right. a lot of attention to what happens in the league this week. Yeah, it's well, I, I think what you see is it's such a slim margin, right? It's such a slim margin between the teams and the win-loss records. It's also a slim difference between the guy that's fifth on the most improved team and the guy that's sixth or the guy that's first and the guy that's second. If you have an opportunity to start a basketball team, do you want A.J. Green or Cameron Crutwig? The answer is yes. I want them. I want them both. I don't care which one it is. That's why the difference is so that's so marginal, and that's why we're down to the last week of the season. That's what makes Missouri Valley basketball so fun. Well, I'm excited about watching the individual performances this week, the team performances, and, of course, we're very excited about the tournament coming up in just a short time in St. Louis, our 30th rendition of Arch Madness. Adam, thank you very much for joining us this evening, and we will talk to you next week.